Okay, I'm just going to do a real short video. It's just a little nugget of what I've been studying and just to kind of give you a food for thought for today because I saw a post on Facebook from someone that was basically saying that we didn't need a savior, that we could fix ourselves in, in so many words, that we could do it ourselves. And, and that actually made me cry because we do need a savior because if we could do it ourselves, if we could fix ourselves, then why? You know, that would have made Jesus suffering and dying on the cross for nothing. And I mean, he didn't just get a few lashes with a whip and then nailed to the cross. I mean, even nailed to the cross alone. But he was beaten so severely that it, that it was transfigured of a man. You couldn't even tell he was a man anymore. That's how badly they tore his flesh before he was even nailed to the cross. So that, that really made me sad. And I told that person I'm truly going to pray for them. But what I want to share with you is something I've learned and I've really been researching this and and searching out people that study the constellations and all this everyone knows September 23rd we had the constellation Virgo in the sky with the moon at her feet her body clothed dead as in the Sun and a crown of nine stars above her head which was the constellation Leo made up nine of the stars and and the other three stars was something that hasn't happened since like seven four thousand or seven thousand years ago and that's where mercury mean mercury venus and mars all lined up like this in a line to make the other three stars so she had a crown of 12 stars at her head now nine months prior to september 23rd Jupiter passes through all the time, you know, because everything's rotating. We're rotating or whatever. I'm not that much into that. I just know that it's constantly moving or it, we're moving around it or whatever. But nine months prior to September 23rd, Jupiter entered into Virgo in the womb and circled for nine months. And then on September 23rd, Jupiter exited Virgo's womb or womb through her legs. Now the unique thing about that is also in 2015 the same star that the three wise men saw when they looked for Jesus to bring him the gold, incense, and myrrh, that's the star that they followed to find the, the Savior. And that same star has appeared in the sky in 2015 and it stays up there for two years and every time that star has been up there something, a couple of significant things happen. The first one star that I know going far far back when the star was in the sky, Abraham was told he'd be the father of many nations. God made that promise to him. And and within that two years, you know, at one point those those angels came and told Abram that he would, you know, his wife would become pregnant. And she was already probably like 100 years old. And, and she laughed. But within that two-year period, she did get pregnant and give birth to a child. And that's that was when that, that was when... The birthing of a nation began and then the next time the star was in the sky was when jesus was born now in that two-year period uh, when jesus was about two i'm not sure when what age he was but at one point god spoke to joseph in a dream and said take the child and his mother to egypt so they fled to egypt in the middle of the night well in that two-year period while that star was in the sky herod who was fearing this new king of the jews that was going to take his throne or he thought he was he ordered the murder of all babies age two and under to try to kill this king of Jews that he heard about that was born because the wise men were instructed by the king to come back and tell him where this baby is so that he may go and worship him too and of course you know God spoke to those wise men after they found Jesus and they went back to their home country and they didn't report back to King Herod so he decided just to take matters in his own hand and just have all the babies killed and that's really sad Rachel weeping for her children yeah so then now the stars in the sky again so we have this constellation Virgo where the first time in uh, like 4,000 or 7,000 I really wish I'd wrote it down years is the last time that Vir that Jupiter actually entered into Virgo in the womb but nine months like I said for nine months circled in her womb and then came out her legs but now the thing about Virgos when she was like at the highest point you had Virgo as a woman travailing to be delivered, birth pains. And then you had Leo above her head and the three planets in line that made the crown. Now let's go to Revelation 12, 1 and 2. And I hope I can see this without my glasses. I'm sure I'm going to have to get them marked. 
I need my glasses. Hold on. Okay, I can't find my glasses. Let me pause you for a minute. Okay, sorry about that. I couldn't find my glasses, which is weird. I really need them. So I brought it up on my other screen on my computer. Revelation 1 and 2. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Okay? Well, we saw that on September 23rd. We saw the Virgo, or the Virgin, in the sky with the moon at her feet, the sun clothing her body, and the crown of 12 stars, which was the constellation Leo and the three planets, Mer Mercury, Mars, and Venus. Now, here's the unique thing. Revelation 3 says, and then appeared another sign. There appeared another wonder, or sign, in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now what I wanted to share with you, and I left my notes over here. You're probably, you're probably asking yourself, well, I haven't heard of anything hitting the earth. Well, yeah, you probably have. Uh, it's on October 8th, Draco Meteor Shower. And they called it another name, but it's uh, Draconoid, I think is what they called it. But it was a Draco meteor shower. So, and I, I want to say that was in China, that there was a meteor shower that was literally hitting the ground. Because I saw a video where it was showing them hitting the ground, and it was like fireballs or whatever. So, you know, we could even say that t three and four... As far as the tail slinging the, you know, the stars out of the sky. Now, some people say that, you know, if you take the book of Revelation, you split it in two. Chapters 1 through 11, and then 12 through the end. And I want to say 22, I think, or 23. Gosh, I don't remember. I think it's 22. But, so, it's kind of like it's it's saying the same thing again when it starts in 12, as it did in the, in the Revelation 1. Uh, as far as the dragon, where it's talking about... It was in the first part of Revelation. It's talking about that there was a great war in heaven. Michael and his angels were fighting against Satan and his angels, and Satan and his and a third of the angels was cast out of heaven unto the earth. And so, a lot of people think that those stars that were thrown to the earth were actually the fallen angels of Satan's. So you could probably look at that either two ways, but it's just a little peculiar that not long after we see this wonder in heaven that this exact thing hadn't happened in like at least 4,000 years as far as those three planets lining up so perfectly to finish the 12 stars for her crown. Uh, it makes me think that maybe now the first part of Revelation talks about the war in heaven, but now it's talking about, you know, and it's talking about the stars that were cast down to earth and then we have a meteor shower like two weeks later. Well, two weeks in a day. So, you know, it's just, it's things to make you wonder. I've got, literally, I don't know if you can see all these pages, how thick it is. All this is notes that I've been taking, studying the end times, and the things that are happening in the world, and the things that are depicted in the Bible that are happening, or have happened. And... And, and I did watch uh, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn last night, and I actually shared that one to James because he, 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 he's just good. Because it also gives you uh, the knowledge of from the Jewish side of it, you know, because they have a different calendar than we do. They actually use God's calendar, which is what we should use. We use a Gentile calendar. But he was making some great points and, and he's talking about the in, in one Perry Stone I was watching was talking about the Jubilee years 50 see 1917 Israel came back people of Israel came, started coming back 
and then in 1947, I think it was, or 48, I think it was 47. And one thing you have to remember is on the Jewish calendar, I think it's called the Greco calendar, or there's another one. I'm not sure which one it is. Their years isn't like ours. Ours is 2017, was January 1st, 2017. Theirs, their years are 2016, 2017, and then 2017 to 2018. Because, you know, like in the, if you work for government, or like when I was in the military, our 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 year started over actually in October, and that so technically we're already you know in their calendar we're already in the 2017-2018 year. So if you hear people talking about things to come in 2018, it's be, that's why you know it doesn't mean that everything that's been said about this year is a lie. No, it just falls in that year. But here's the thing. Okay, 1917, they started returning to Israel. The late 1800s, early 1900s, Israel started turning back to God, and it started raining on that desert land, because it was before then, it was a wasteland, because they had turned away from God spiritually, and their land was made a wasteland. And people would come to visit Israel, and they'd just see all this dirt, and no, nothing. They're thinking, wow, this is God's chosen people, and God's chosen land, and it looks like this? You know, we figured it'd look like Garden of Eden or something started raining and it started growing vegetation again and then in 1947 in 1917 the Balfour Declaration was signed that gave Israel back to the Jews to the Israelites and to the Jewish people so they could start going home 1947 is when they were made a nation and then in 1967 was the Six Day War because Israel was actually split down the middle before that and you had West Bank, and then you had this side, and you know, one side was uh, like the Jordan, and one side was, I don't know, I'd, I'd have to listen to it again, I'm not that good in history, but anyways, on, in 1967, they had a six-day war, and Israel, you know, won, and they got all of the land back, and so he said that a 50-year jubilee is getting your land back and of course by not by then you know there was just green and trees and flowers and it was just absolutely just beautiful then once they put 1917 Balfour Declaration 1967 was declared a nation 50 year jubilee and there was in 1967 there was an outpouring of the spirit and many turned back to God as far as the Jewish go and God's chosen people and then if you forward 1967 to 2017, we're at another 50-year jubilee, which would mean another outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And God's people, Gentile, Greek, Jew, are going to rise up and stand up. And we're not going to be the silent majority anymore. But that's just a little bit of something I wanted to, to share with you. Um, and if you have a chance, read Ezekiel 33. That was a, a scripture God gave me the other day. And basically it's talking about that you'll set forth a watchman. So when the sword comes, you can sound the alarm and blow the trumpet to warn the people. But if you see the sword come and you don't sound the alarm and you don't warn the people and they die, they die in their iniquities. And then God will require your blood, their blood on your hand or something to that. I'd have to read it again. Basically what it's saying is, you know, Jesus told us to watch, to watch for him. And, you know, with everything that's going on in the world and everything that's just lining up with the Bible, it's from what I'm seeing and what I've learned, and I'm, I'm really going to put all this together and do a, a video on it, is it's coming, it's finishing up, it, it's wrapping up. It's ramping up also, but it's also wrapping up. We're getting ready to start the seven-year tribulation. I don't think we've even seen anything yet, really these uh all these hurricanes and these floods and all this crazy weather we were having that was god warning us to get right to let us know he's god that all this didn't just happen because something exploded or it wasn't created out of nothing you know like some people believe he's letting us know hey i'm here and i'm still alive i never died i was never dead i'm still here and i'm you know he's warning us letting us know you better get right because start, it's getting ready to get, it's like the calm before the storm, just like President Trump said once. 
it is the calm before the storm because it's really getting ready to hit the fan and it's going to be seven years of tribulation but it also says in the bible that if if it weren't you know if the days weren't shortened there would be no flesh saved but for the elect's sake the days are shortened so the, those that are believers and followers of christ that are saved that, that have a confession in jesus uh, the first three and a half years, you know, the Antichrist is going to make peace with the nations, and it's going to be great for the first three and a half years, and then the Antichrist is going to truly show his colors. And so, a lot of people believe that God is going to come get us, Jesus is going to come for his people, and all those that follow him. Before the tribulation, some believe mid-trib, some believe post-trib. I still don't really know where we're at on that. All I know is, is I'm watching. I'm just going to watch. It says to be ready in season and out of season, and that's what I'm doing. He, he may come today. He may not come for another year. It may be seven years from now. You know, it, I don't know. Because it says no one knows the day or the hour, not even Jesus. I mean, not the angels or even Jesus. Only the Father knows. But Jesus also, you know, told us that, you know, if we're able to look at the sky and know it's going to rain and look at the sky and know it's going to be hot, then why can't we see the signs of the times? So I'm looking at the signs of the times. And I know it's either Jesus is going to take us out and then tribulation is going to be for those that didn't receive the free gift of salvation. And it's kind of like a, you know, that tribulation period. And some, a lot of people are going to be forced to either deny Christ and worship the image of the beast or be killed. And so then those people that really stand faithful to the end to Jesus you know of course they're going to uh, they, some people call it the second resurrection or the second rapture I don't know I have to look at that anyways I'm getting off on stuff that I'm not real sure about and I don't want to give the wrong information get in your Bibles find it in there and say Debbie this is what it actually says you had it wrong I'll be okay with that don't embarrass me in front of people. Don't make me look like an idiot. Don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. I know what God's given me, and I've been sharing it with James as I go along, so I've got a witness. As soon as God gives me a revelation, I run to James and tell him about it. And then I give him the information that I have that coincides with it, that backs it up. So, even if I don't remember it exactly, James may. But anyways, I don't like to preach gloom and doom, but you know what? We're at that time. We're at that time that it's like we need to, to get it together. We need to choose this day who we're going to serve. Are we going to uh, serve the world and everything in it and lose our own soul? Or are we going to serve Jesus and gain our life? Because, you know, Jesus said he is the resurrection and the life. And you shall live even though you die. Meaning your fleshly body may die, but your spirit will live eternally. And when we're resurrected, or when we're raptured, whichever the case may be for some, you know, already gone, we will be transformed. The immortal will be made, I mean, the mortal will be made immortal, and the corruptible will be made incorruptible. In a twink, just like in the twinkling of an eye, we'll be changed. And I can't wait for that. I cannot wait for that. I cannot wait for that. Just to have... 10 minutes of not having my body aching from RA and, and fibromyalgia and all these other stupid names even though I know Jesus is the name above all names and I know that I am already healed and I should claim it so you know we're not all perfect you know we may preach a lot but we don't always practice what we preach but God knows that I'm trying I'm trying to have the faith of a mustard seed to say to my body get in line with yourself I rebuke these illnesses, these diseases, these names, because every knee shall bow at the name of Jesus. Every eye will see him coming in the, in the clouds. Every tongue will confess Jesus is Lord. Even Satan will bow the knee when Jesus returns. And when Jesus returns, everyone's going to be watching. And I don't know, in this day and age, it's going to be on YouTube and iPhones, you know, cell phones recording it and TV news and all this it's probably going to be a pretty it's going to be and no one will deny that that's Jesus coming in the clouds and there'll be a lot of people trying to hide from them because of their shame of what they you know because they know because now they're like oh man they were right those Christians were right they weren't crazy they were right and and when Jesus comes for us it says in the Bible 
Let the unjust remain unjust. Let the filthy remain filthy. Let the holy remain holy and let the righteous remain righteous. So wherever you are at, at that moment in your walk with God, that's where you will be. That's where you will remain eternally. So get in the word. Ask God to reveal to you what his word says. If you don't understand what the Bible says, ask God to, to give you knowledge and understanding. Pray before you read it that God will reveal to you what it is it's saying. Because, you know, two people can read a scripture and they can get two different meanings from it. Pastor can re preach about faith and at the end of the sermon someone will say, man, that was a great message about prayer. And, you know, that's not what he was preaching about, but that's what God gave them. That was the word God gave them and that's just how awesome God is. And so, you know, one person may take it one way, another may take it another. I try to go with, you know, what the majority feel that that passage means but I also ask God to reveal to me what he's saying there if I don't understand the scripture John 3 16 that's pretty cut and dry for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever whosoever it doesn't matter if you're from Egypt or you're from you're a Muslim or you're a Buddhist or you're Isis or Methodist Nazarene, Nazareth, yeah, whatever, you know, it doesn't matter, whosoever, and I'm a whosoever, whosoever believes in him shall have everlasting life. So, anyways, that's it for today. I gotta get ready to go to the doctor, but I just wanted to share that with you just a little bit, because it's just really, it's really exciting. It's really exciting these times, because I'm looking forward to that trumpet sound, because when Jesus comes, the clouds will roll back like a scroll, and there'll be a, shart, a shout of the archangel, and a trumpet will sound. And I promise you, it's going to catch everyone's attention. Because you just picture the entire sky, no matter where you are in the world, and you see clouds rolling back. just, And then you see God, or Jesus, same thing, coming in the clouds, and all these angels that he's going to send out to, to gather his people from the, you know, all, you know, all around the earth and heaven and gather them all together those who are dead will, will rise will rise first and those who of us who are so alive that remain will meet up with them in the air will be caught up with them in the air but anyways god bless jesus loves you and remember there's no pit too deep that jesus can't pull you out so don't think that you have to try to get yourself right before you start serving jesus jesus says come as you are and he will give you peace. God bless brothers and sisters. And I pray this word gave you something to think about and, and intrigued you to if nothing else to try to prove me wrong for what I said. That's okay. Just do it in a loving way. Don't scream it at me. Don't embarrass me. Don't make me feel like crap because I don't have, a, you know, I don't, I may not know it perfectly because I haven't been preaching for ever. I haven't. I'm not a preacher. But I'm trying. I'm doing, I'm using what God has given me to try to spread the word to everyone. So, if it makes someone get in the Bible to try to prove me wrong, so be it. At least you're reading the word of God. Just like when Paul was in prison, there were people out there, they were, they were preaching, you know, the gospel to people. And they weren't doing it because they were on fire for Jesus. They were doing it because they were trying to make things worse for Paul. And Paul said, hey, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. He said, as you know, they may be doing it for the wrong reasons, but they're doing it, and the word's still getting spread. So, hey, that's, that's what it's all about. That's what we're called to do. Jesus came to the earth not to judge it, but to save it and to share the good news and the gospel and the kingdom of heaven. And when he went to be with the Father, he sent a comforter and a guide, the Holy Spirit, before before that, people didn't have the Holy Spirit. We're blessed in this generation to have the Holy Spirit to guide us. There will be a time, though, when the Holy Spirit will be taken from us. And then it will just be have to be us and our faith in God. And we won't have the Holy Spirit to go, hey, knock it off, you know. Or, hey, don't do it that way. Don't sin. Do this instead. So, you need to get really ground in deep in the Word of God. And in your walk with God, in relationship with God. And when you talk to God, talk to Him like you would anyone else. You don't have to have some theological type discussion. Just 
talk to him. You know, God knows what's in your heart before you say it anyway. But he still likes to hear from his children. You know, just like you love it when your kids talk to you. Okay, I'm rambling again. I'm trying not to make too long a video so I don't get, you know, I even get bored with them sometimes. So, anyways, God bless you. I hope you have a blessed day. I hope, I hope this word reached somebody or at least got them intrigued enough to kind of look into the constellation thing and, and the book of Revelation and, and get them going because there's getting ready to be a great revival. Great revival. And I hope I'm still here to be here when the Holy Spirit, because it says in the end times the Holy Spirit will be poured out like it, you know, like it, you have seen it probably since the day of Pentecost. And I'm just waiting. I'm waiting. I just, I love it. And yes, I do have the Holy Spirit on me. I do feel Him on me. I feel Him around me. He's the one that gives me the courage to do these videos, to try to share this video with, with my 500 and something friends on Facebook that if at least one person gets a good word, a good seed planted, I may not may not lead them to Christ, but I am planting seeds. I'm trying to plant seeds. And God will water it and make it grow. So I'll plant the seeds. God is, I'm asking God to use me however he wants. I'm a shy person. I, I have trouble trying to minister to people, but if God gives me a word, I, boy, it just comes boldly out of my mouth. So it's not that I don't do it, but I will. And, but this is an easier way for me because then I don't have any distractions or interruptions and I can just try to let it flow out. So, God bless. Again, I say, and have a great day. Jesus loves you and so do I. And remember, the greatest commandment is this, to love one another as you love yourself. God bless.